I don't have a lot of information on these. Uh, my father was the dealer development manager for International Harvester from 1935 until he retired in 73 in four different states. All the pictures I'm going to show you here are from 1938 and 1939. Wow, that's cool. They were in his collection. There are places he called on. So I think he's the photographer. I am not sure. But almost all of them say McCormick Daring on them. And a couple of the things I like from what I'm seeing in these is um, the like the pumps here in the front, right along the door. Mm -hmm. uh, center deal. Uh, there is a sign behind it. Uh, Ogley, I think, is one of the names behind it. But this is Creighton, Nebraska in this picture. Well, he knew how to expose that camera of his. And he wasn't a big photographer. That's the part that's strange. Uh, I found this uh, in trying to make up some signs. Uh, my wife is from Beamer, Nebraska. So uh, my brother-in-law remembered seeing this name in some of his dad's papers. Uh, my uh, wife's family, the entire uh, farm was uh, International Harvester. So I was in from day one. Yeah. Didn't have to explain a lot of stuff. This one here, I don't have them. I I have to get all these marked for where they're from. This is another one in Nebraska. It was a hardware store, and uh, the tractors were just there on the side. So this was this was on Main Street for the dealership. Hmm. Look at that brickwork. Yeah. I'm kind oh. of intrigued by the little building in the lower left corner. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That could be something as important as a barbershop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, might be, it might be City Hall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, had, we had a radio station in town that was like that. So when I get, uh, I can't see there's some wording there on the side. I can't, can't make it out right. here. But when I do the presentation again for the full thing, I'll have everything. Oh, Homer, Nebraska. BB Barber Company. There it is. That's another picture of the same place. That was after the earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> this one is hot. Can't make it out there. Hansner, Hosmers. Iowa. Yeah. Hospers. Hospers. Okay. And it was just uh, looked like an old barn almost at first, but or it was just yard. a dealership right off the side. It looks like a lumber yard. Yeah, looks like yeah. lumber. So where's Hospers at about? Northeast, central? No, uh, northwest. Uh, northwest. Okay. I, yeah, I, I can't think at the moment. So, okay. Again, I'm going to do a little more research before I show everything. Here it is again, a little older picture. Yep, definitely an old lumber yard. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Like here on the side where they got the junk piled, uh, <laughs> make a nice would make a nice little scene over there. Next picture is Hall, Iowa. This could be built very easily. Um, it looks like pretty much the model that. Um, Forget which company came out of, but it was the original Kalmbach building uh, when they started. Oh yeah, oh, the front end of that 
could match this building here. That had a fire too. Yeah. Oh yeah, it did. Now you look at it. <clears throat> yeah, because you can tell the windows have been replaced. Yeah. They're not painted, they're wood. Compared Ooh. to the other side. Yep. Osprey's, so got... for what it's worth, is uh, southeast of Sioux Falls. Okay, thank you. That probably puts it up there by Sibley, then. Yes, it's up in that neck of the woods. In that neck of the woods, okay. Yep. Um, a couple things here. You got the false front uh, hiding the roof and everything. That stands out pretty good. This is kind of a common sign you're going to see through here for the uh, McCormick Daring signs. Uh, also like the metal wheels there on the side. Another one on the main street or off the main street a little bit. And I can't tell what town this is. But the um, Garage opens up there, but it's then blocked on both sides. It says Ida Grove, there. Iowa, on your on your label. Oh, see, I can't see the label. Uh, yeah, Ida Grove, Iowa, R. A. Boatman International Harvester. Okay. okay, I can't see that. Yeah. So, but an interesting detail right there in the middle of the door. Why? Notice the cast iron street lamp. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Yep. Same building here then. Some nice old trucks there. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Another picture shows part of the alley. So you got the door here, garage, and then you got garage doors in the back. Off the alley. Again, these are all 38 and 39. Oh. I saved that from something I found. And I can't remember what the equipment was that it was used for. Hmm. That was a special tractor they built for spraying, was it grapevines? And they're only like half a dozen made. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I've got the same photo. <laughs> okay. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Huh. Uh, here, 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 here you go, Mr. Minister. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can turn your church into a dealership. That's right. Which came first? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the IH is the holiest of the tractors, so. All right. You look, um, across, you look across the front door and they got a sign and there's no steps there. So, yep. Huh. So we took that out, added to the back of it there, and you'll see another. I think I got another picture from the side of it. Yeah, there it is. So you see they got all the equipment and everything out there on the side. Here. I wonder if Here they bring. Bell, ring a bell Here every time they sale. Yeah, right. I'll bet lightning hit, hit the original steeple. Could be. I right now, they took the steeple off when it became the dealership or if it was gone before the church was done. Yeah. Oh, like they uh, did Pizza Hut, Rick. Uh, I think he photoshopped it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's an Ireton, Iowa, which is another... Northwest area. Northwest town. one. Okay. Yep. But if you got an old church sitting around, you need something to model with. Here you go. Well, if you got one of those church buildings, you have no idea what you're going to do with, you know, a, a model. There you go. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, this one. I'm going to flip ahead one here real quick. Nope, that's not. I only have one, one of this picture. That says Lynch, Nebraska. Lynch. 
Mm -hmm. I'm glad you guys, I can't see that. So yes, yeah, the file name, Bob Carter dealership, it says. Okay. It looks like it started as a gas station too. Yeah. Two pumps out front. I got a building I built like this back in the 80s for the Omaha Railroad Club down at Western Heritage that was based on a front end like this in Chapman, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. so com common type of front. Here is Lynch, uh, here's Lynch, Nebraska. Interesting. Looks like a fire alarm there on the side. Tornado siren. Tornado, Tornado siren. Yep. Yep. Very common in Nebraska and Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that alleyway yeah <laughs> that's a big motor driver in that that siren yeah yep wow here's an interesting one i think i got two of this in niobrara nebraska corner corner type of a building pull up for the cars gas station and uh, tractor place. Wonderful tank truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the Coca-Cola drive-in sign too. And I think I got, no, I don't have another one this one. Okay, here's Pierce, Nebraska, which is, Pierce is spelled wrong, it's P-I-E. RCE, um, but nice block building. If you got a block building, you need to do something. Do it this way. Got a cultivator. I think it's a cultivator there. Right next to a shoe store. <laughs> Here's Randolph, Nebraska, another older shed. Early combine sitting there with the um, uh, the McCormick uh, Deering, what is that, an F2 tractor there on the side? Yeah, and it's about that age, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a binder. A binder, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. old enough to remember them. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have to open my history books, Bob. I'm <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> I I'll remember that. <laughs> I just drove through Randolph a few weeks ago, and that wasn't there. So yeah. <laughs> here's another one for a major downtown scene. Again, pumps are in the front on the main street. That's Grimson. Yeah. Is that Remsen? Okay. That's Remsen, Iowa, it says. Yeah. Can... And let's see. That says the Falk Block, F-A-L-K-E, yep. at the top of the building. 1915. Yep. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. And a Ford dealership. Yeah, Ford. <laughs> Ford and McCormick and like the doors there in the front. Of it. In yeah, the that, that's unique oh. with the overhead. Um, so yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, being on the main street, they have to maintain the look of the building because there's a lot, not a lot of junk sitting around. No, that looks more like a lodge hall that's been converted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, and a well, DX well, sign. Well, I I remember DX signs. Yeah. yeah. The left hand door looks familiar for some reason. It almost looks like a Masonic thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's got the look of a lodge hall to me. So it could be a yeah. Mason. Yeah. Could be one upstairs. Very well. Yeah, that could be. Looks like they a, all, often we're upstairs. Looks like an open room up there at the top. So and look at the light bulb strung across the street. <laughs> yep. 
and note the the bulbs on the building in the corners there. Oh yeah. Never heard of U.S. tires though. Huh. Hmm. That, that's an old brand. You start looking for old automobile up signs type. There's Remsen, Iowa. There, there, there's same thing. Another mm -hmm. angle. Yep. Okay. Peters, yeah. yeah. Can you go back yeah. to the previous picture? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. If my I, I didn't recognize the awning thing or you know, in that picture, and being that it was an angle shot with the other one, it stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty fancy. It is yeah. a fancy building. Yep. That's also up in Northwest Iowa. And I think it's still there. My son's roommate from Briarcliff College was from Remsen. Mm -hmm. I think when we were up there for his wedding, I think that was still there. Yep. Sanborn, San Iowa. Sanborn, Iowa. That's in the southeast corner of Osceola County, way up there, almost on the Minnesota border. Okay. So. Look how the, open, the big open doorway has like a couple of buttresses coming down from it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the and the, the corners of the building are the same way, and they've got it down the sides too. I mean, usually buttresses are needed for you know for structural integrity, and those seem pretty small for that small of a building. Yeah, it's if it's concrete block, they might have just been put it in for reinforcement for and. It, also, it could be a clear, clear span story, uh, you know, roof inside. Yeah, could yeah. be. And, and using the buttresses to support the. Hmm. The side of the building looks like stone. Yeah, I'm thinking the and front's been the stuccoed of some somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's there. This one. Oh. Lushwig. Schleswig, okay. Schleswig is also up northwest Iowa. Okay. Looks like my dad traveled to the same place all the time, to the same area. Mm -hmm. the, the side looks like that um, sheet metal panels pressed yeah. to look like brick. Oh, yeah, brick. Had not noticed that before. I think I have another one of those one again. Let me see. Nope, I don't. The other thing. That was fancy. It's got curtains. I know. Yeah. This is Sioux City, Iowa. So I'm not sure exactly what well, street it was on. And and remember, International Harvester also sold kitchen appliances, refrigerators. And so the curtains may have been appealing to the housewife looking for a new refrigerator. We had growing up. An IH refrigerator, that thing lasted 32 years. Yep. One of the best things ever built. My father in law had three of the free uh, bunker freezers or box freezers. The look like a almost like a funeral vault. Mm -hmm. And they also had washing machines. Yep. So that, that being the case, I would think a guy would say, hey, I got to run into town. But he'd say somewhere else he's going not there. So yeah. the wife can tag along. <laughs> this one Wayne, Wayne, Nebraska. Wayne okay, Wayne. that's straight west of um Sioux City. Yep. Yep. Just a little north of Norfolk and about 20 yeah. miles from my in-laws farm in Beamer. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd like to see what the back of the place looks like for doors and everything, but that's all that we have right there. Mm -hmm. And I got to blow it up so I can see what all these signs are in the window. <laughs> nice thing to match. I think that's okay. That's the last of them that I got right now. Very but nice. I, I, have, I have 60 more to scan. 60. Wow. That'll be uh, part one and part two, maybe part three. Yeah. So 
Okay. Now, how do I get out of this? Craig? I can Quick help you with that. Control Alt Delete. Go, go down there and hit the share. Yeah, there you go. Okay, there it goes. Okay. Nice job, Tim. Thank you. Well, I got cool. I got yeah. some more to do, and again, I want to try and start doing some research on them. But oh, it's okay. If you want more busy. For international harvester, Greg, I do have a file now. Sure, let's see it. Okay. By the way, I was an international harvester employee in 1974. Worked the parts depot in Kansas City while in college. <laughs> nice. My friends are making three dollars an hour, and I was making seventeen thirty-two an hour. Nice. <laughs> Beers are on Tim. Oh, I've got something messed up here. Not the only one. <laughs> Dave, did I break break your record? Um, <laughs> Not even close. No, we would still be struggling to show the first okay. image to approach some of my finest moments. You might have set the record though for actually exiting Zoom when trying to share. <laughs> so that to be outdone. All right, I'm not getting uh I uh, see what I'm I'm doing wrong here. It sounds like it looks like the same issue where it seems like if you share after you are on the big picture, it works are better. You, yeah. Yep. Are you yeah, I Okay, I'm seeing up on my screen a bus. Are you seeing a bus or are you seeing something else? We see all the pictures. Bus and a bus. Ah, you're seeing all the pictures. Okay. I gotta figure out what did I what am I doing wrong here? So you stop sharing, just go into your menu and expand the first image and then start screen sharing. I sound like the world's foremost authority, but uh, I'm, I'm I'm shooting blind. Well, they say if you really want to learn something, you try to teach it. That's the best way. Well, I thought they used to say those who can't teach. <laughs> those who can't do it are the ones who can't do. Those who can't teach. Those who can't do are the are the ones that teach. Yeah, that I've heard that one a lot, but I don't really subscribe to it. Nah. I'm not gonna tell my wife who just retired 38 years at the same school that 20 years. Wow. I just retired after 40 years at the same place, and I thought that was yeah. something. 48, couldn't imagine. She put up with that because she had all girls, so it wasn't a okay. Are, are you seeing all the pictures or the bus? issue we're not seeing anything yet really sharing yeah. just that perplexed look on your face <laughs> it, it, i should send this video into zoom to say you know quit changing this stuff because <laughs> doug has done this how many times yeah it's crazy well it's how those engineers keep their jobs exactly that's what I, that's one of our i'm a french horn player and that's what we say about transposition I was three weeks from retirement, and our IT upgraded my AutoCAD. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a good thing I was I was I was scoping her down at that point because I, I as soon as I opened it up, every you know all my, everything's different, everything's changed. Just like geez. Yeah, we're still we're still seeing the directory, Doug. I understand that. Okay. Something. Uh... I'm doing what I always do before, and it's not working. That's what's okay. got me puzzled. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I. Now you, you, you've got. Are you on two monitors? Yes. 
So you may want to try sharing the other monitor or something. Or can no. you drag the image from that monitor to the, to the well, that's monitor? That's what I'm. A, that's normally what I do is I drag from the one monitor to the other before I start screen sharing. <clears throat> and for some reason, are you I'm, sharing? Are you sharing the screen or are you sharing the uh, the the uh, the application? No, I'm not getting what I want to do, period. <laughs> so let's see if. Uh, I don't want to open a workplace. So. You seeing a bus now? Yeah. Yes, we are. Small one. Okay. There it goes. Oh, that is an international school bus. Nice. Ah. That's a 1937 39 Model D. <laughs> and it now looks like it's headed, it looks like it's headed to a girls' school. Yeah. Well, that it's in Paris, Arkansas. That's all I can tell you. So, what we're going to do now and see if we can. Yep. You'll see some of you may or may not be familiar with this kit, but you'll see more of it later. I'll explain that. Mm -hmm. I just had dumped everything I have for International Harvester. What this has got is oh, that's inside height. That's not what we want. Okay, here is a um farm oil factory in the Quad Cities being served by the CBQ. A load of um this is a 1952 oh. photo. So we get probably a bunch of M's on there, farm all M's. Uh, here's an early dealership. This is in Clarion, Pennsylvania. That looks a lot like that school. Yes, notice the red pylon <laughs> here. This was yeah. a, this was the International Harvester's 1943 design for new implement dealership buildings. And you'll see the, the big big windows here and you know, you've got service bays back here and office space, but this big red brick pylon was kind of their, their symbol. So which what clued me in on the on the school building. Okay, here we got a farm all uh, 1940 photo of a guy enjoying, I think that's an F2, but don't quote me. I don't know my tractors that well. Here's the same guy in the same same farm wall. Well, that one's got rubber tires. Here's a shot of a bunch of farm wall C's, I believe. A's and, no, A's and B's, which was their small tractors. Right. Here's a load of uh, farm old cubs loaded on a flat car. I can't can't quite make out the flat car, but probably the quad cities. <clears throat> but notice how they're loaded crossways and they're blocked, and then they're just tied tied down with wire. There's no chain because chain was expensive. Wire was cheap. Are those Clinchfield? Um, covered hoppers in the background? Yes, mm -hmm. they are. Well, string on them. Yeah. So. Oh, they're kind of far from home. Either that or the tractors are far from home. Yeah. I mean, they these could be being delivered out east somewhere for all I know. Oh, uh, I must have misunderstood. I thought you said it was like out in Iowa City or something. Well, that's where they were built. Uh. In the Quad Cities. But let's see what the next picture. Ah, here we got a Farmall M with an Aulis Chalmers combine. So I just dumped all my International Harvester Farmall stuff in here. Here we are. This is an early photo of them shipping. And again, notice the tie downs are twisted wire. This is not chain. The chains didn't always come back to whoever provided them. The wire was cheap, so they could be it could be thrown away. And the blocking, you know, this is all steel rims. 
sometimes the tractors were, were just shipped with a kind of a temporary steel rim because then they would buy the rubber tires locally, especially for those being shipped overseas. So that was something that was common. Here we got another, there's a, a later shot of, of farm walls. This is 1949 in Rock Island, again, being served by the CB&Q. Uh, notice all the, the tire rims down here, but we've got, uh, I don't know what they are. Some farm wall guy will have to tell us what kind of tractors they are. Let's see now, why can't I? Okay, now we're not advancing. I, I know why. Um, and here's a, a load of farm wall tractors going somewhere on the Monon. So, you know, these are Indiana somewhere. I'm still seeing, the, I'm still seeing the Burlington switcher. Ah, yeah. uh oh, something didn't work. How come? Ah, I, it's, ah, now we got it. Here's the Monon. Yeah. Sorry about that. But yeah, here's a load of small farm holes, a whole string of flat cars. And this, you know, this is not in Iowa, Illinois, because nope. it's, it's Monon locomotive. So they shipped a whole train load of them somewhere. Mm. Reduce down, click to the next one. Another guy enjoying his farm wall. And look at the lugs on these tires. Yeah. Yeah. So when you drive around in rural mid-America and you see tractor lugs not allowed, this is what they mean. <laughs> they don't want these going down their nice paved county roads. <laughs> so. And here we got a, a farm wall M working the field, plow, pulling the plow. Here is a tractor load of formal M's on an MP flat car. Um, these may be the sunshine models. They're not the lifelike tractors, I don't think. So, but someone built a nice flat car load of them. And here is an MTA, which is what the lifelike tractor really is, is an MTA, which was a formal M with semi-automatic transmission that came out in about 70, 52 or 53. But the the tractor, the Lifelike two, PK-2 two tractor is a essentially an M body, but it's just got some minor details that most of us would not be able to detect. But notice that the seat is a, a, a white leather. We got silver rims on the front and rear tires, plus the the galvanized metal um, muffler. So when you go to paint your farm alls, tractors, those are some little details you want to watch for. So, or if I'm judging a contest and I see your model, that's one of the things I'm going to be looking for. <laughs> so, and I happen to have in my collection a couple sets of the um, oddballs farm all tractor decals. And so I was scanning them. That's what this is. So if anybody wants a, a scan of farm all decals and HO, I can help you out. This is the um, oddballs he included a photo. This was the sheet of decals and, and the instructions. So you can see he called it, a, they, they sold it as an H, but it's actually a, an M that and I have a have I use a sometimes I'll mark the back of my decals with a marker to make that so I can see the white lettering better. So that shows you a little bit more of what is actually included on the on yeah. the decal. So and here we are. I love this photo with the loading onto the flatbed from just a, a you know depression dug into the hill bank there. 
and very unusual tire. Our, our truck uh, lug design, tread design on this tire. Oh, yeah. And um, this, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure where this implement dealership is, Griffin Implement. No room for air there. Yeah. Yeah, getting on that truck. <laughs> yeah, he's, but that's, that's was pretty common the way they were, transported so here we've got um hartford wisconsin is on the truck uh canning company and they are harvesting well i'm not sure what they're harvesting uh, probably it might be sugar beets from the look of the but i can't be sure but here's another early farm all tractor What was that, Bob? No, I was, can you go back to that last picture? Sure I can. Zoom in on the front of the tractor. Looks like there's a... Like right, it looked like there was a light hanging from the front end of it. Right over here? Yeah. I mean, that thing looks cobbled up and then some. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty small picture, so it gets pixelated when I blow it up some, but it it does look like something that's hanging there. And the way it's shining down, it could be it sh shines down so that he can, whatever he's harvesting is a single row harvester, so he can follow the row mm -hmm. at night. Notice that uh, the wheels are spoked as they're the front wheels. Yep, yeah. So, and it doesn't have a silver muffler, though. No, <laughs> no. This is this is earlier than the H's and M's. <laughs> I think this is you know I keep saying an F two, but I think that's what this this is a nineteen twenties farm wall. So, and I I wish I knew for sure what they're harvesting, but I'm it's. There's no corn stalk, so it's some it's probably something like turnips or sugar beets or something similar that they're digging up out of the ground. Yeah, look at all the pinch points on that apparatus. Holy crap. Yeah. And because it's going to a canning company, it's it's something that they're in turn canning. So it's not going to be sugar beets. Probably not might be regular beets. Uh it's just a guessing at the game at this time, but it's a nice photo all the same. Yeah. Wonder if it could be peas. Oh, that's a possibility. Yeah. Yep. So. Well, anyway, let's move on. Let's see what this these characters up to. We got some <laughs> farm holes loaded on a flat car. This is a, a I think it's a CB and Q flat flat car. But um, you know, notice the steel wheel design here, and the young, the little guy here, and the plate to throw over. They can drive the tractor off. So, well, there's that photo again. Ah, here we go. Here we are at the factory. This wow. is a whole string load of. Flat cars here going way back and all the tractors just sitting out here in the. But this would be the factory, I think, at Moline. OK, now here are some question marks. These are a couple very early cast metal HO tractors that I've painted to look somewhat like a, a farm all. I really don't know what they are. But the box, this is, I think it's a Dyna models, and they were marked Farmall. So, but this dates from the early 50s. Dave, you have any idea? Dyna models, the name is familiar. Yeah, that's what these were. They okay. sold for like a dollar a tractor in a little white square, you know, cardboard box way back when. And that's, that's just my sloppy paint job to make them look nice. <laughs> 
And okay, here are, here's another load of farm old tractors and flat car by Trevor Marshall. And um, these might be the lifelike tractors. It looks like them. He's got the steering wheel painted black, but he didn't get the seat painted. But he's got the rims and the muffler. Well, that's and you got, he's got the tie downs and the blocking and so. Hmm. And here's another shot of that factory load. You can see the blocking and a little bit of the wires. Let's see, we'll keep. Ah, here's some really early uh, tractors. These are IH 1020s tractors, 1911 in Milwaukee. It's just, they look, almost look like they were steam tractors, it's been converted over to a a gasoline or diesel gasoline. engine. Yeah. Yeah. They just let's see what comes up next here. We'll zoom out and oh. Here we go. Okay. Now here here we're in a okay, that's an international 560, but there you can see the, the red pylon. Inter International Harvester bu building, uh, one of their lawnmowers, garden tractors. Good uh, yeah, the, they started building these buildings. They designed it in about 43. They started building them after World War II. And so, you know, 47, 49, these started popping up by the 50s. They were uh, quite a few locations. And I think the 560 is a late 50s, early 60s tractor. I know the garden tractor here dates from the, probably the mid 60s, early 60s, because John Deere started coming out with these similar type garden tractors about 64, 62, so. This is a Mason City, Iowa. Doesn't look like an international harvester building at all, but that's what it is. Yeah. So Bob probably knows all about it. Yeah, it looks like the one that used to be in Council Bluffs also. Uh-huh. Yeah. The building's still standing in Council Bluffs. Yeah. I'm 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 wondering if maybe this was more of a parts distribution or parts warehouse type. I don't know. It's just speculation. Now we have, okay, here's that, that schoolhouse model, the th three sides, and you can see where that red pylon really makes me think this is an international harvester dealership, or it could be. And we'll get back to that again. This is, here's an international tractor, um, R something about 1952, 54, this tractor came into being. Here's some IH combines. Uh, on Burlington Northern flats, so we know this is after 72. Okay, here's an IH Albert Motors. Let's see. Lanesdale, Pennsylvania is where this one was located. And again, he doesn't have a brick pylon, but he's, you know, he's got the IH um, Z, uh, neon sign up there and official state inspection station. So, okay, here is one of the first buildings they built after they came up with the design. <laughs> this is 1947 in Millville, Pennsylvania. So, Here is one. This is in Arm. This is Armstrong's dealership in Ames, Iowa. Um, highway 30, Highway 69. This building still stands. I think it's now a 
a rent a furniture place or something like that there in Ames, servicing the college students. So look at manure spreader sitting out here. We got a plow, we got a, a corn picker. It looks like a pretty a nice Buick? looking Buick sitting over here. <laughs> And the sign says U.S. Royal Tires. Earlier, we were wondering what U.S. Tires were, but now it's U.S. Royal. Aha, uh -huh. good point, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing the uh, arcane information we all carry. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, here's just a, an artist's rendition of an IH dealership. Another version. And here is what I did with that schoolhouse building. Um, I'll show you. I cut this wall out and I flipped it over because I thought those big windows really looked like overhead doors with the aluminum framing. And so I just flipped the whole wall over, took a, a silver Sharpie and painted all the aluminum framing, then used some strips of styrene to fill in and printed out some signs to kind of mask or hide the brick. Because, you know, you wouldn't, have, why would brick be above these aluminum doors? And then, you know, just printed some signs out and I set some of my tractors out there and everybody, guys, yeah, yeah that looks like an international harvester dealership. So, and those, it's amazing. Um, Aurora model, motor models did this as a schoolhouse in the 50s. And then they sold the mold to Tyco, who offered it as a, factory with some um, machines and people inside. And then the AHM issued the same building later and something else. Uh, Aurora is the only one that did it in the red mold color. Tyco did it in kind of a soft pink. And uh, But I picked up four or five of these in different colors. So they're out there. We just saw one last weekend at a, at a show and a friend of mine purchased it. So if you if you need an international harvester dealer, structure building there's there's certainly an option so let's see if we can move on to okay here we've got a let's see this is a sugar beet harvester with a farm oil tractor in front the farm oil m that's an international harvester hm1 beet harvester in 1947 Look at the width on the back tire. Yeah. Well, you can see this one's been extended out so they can, awesome. you know, he's got an extension on the axle there so he can get the, um, right down here and get the sugar beets dug out of the ground with this harvester. So they'll kind of like that other one you, you had with the big loop over loop it. Loop on it, yeah. Yeah. So these could be modified in a lot of ways. Now this is a this is a international harvester loader loading a boxcar of grain. You think of a you know you got a hopper here and basically an auger system going up and this going down okay. to a spout into the boxcar. All the grain doors sitting around. So and of course all kinds of signs. Uh, this is a. Um, International Harvester Model H truck, 1935, down in Florida. Here we got another tractor, Metzger and Sons out of Carver Lake, Indiana, I think it is. Anyway, um, livestock trailer. Here's another dealership with that red pylon. And there's another shot of that same dealer. It's amazing what you can find on the internet when you start looking. There's a Shaw livestock trailer but with an IH tractor. Rusty sign. This was a sign that they created for the dealerships. And they had a catalog page so you could order your sign with your name, specifications, uh, varieties of what could be attached to it, and 
<laughs> I mean, this was the order sheet for ordering your shot signs. It gives you, but look at this, it gives you all those dimensions. So if you want to build a model of it, <laughs> I I can I can help you out here. I just <clears throat> right down to the cost from the factory in Illinois. <laughs> um and they call it a trilon. Yep. But, but there's the specs for So if you want to be authentic, here's your chance. Before I retired, I did the same thing when I was at Omaha Neon Sign Company for Valley Irrigation for all uh -huh. their dealerships. We had nine different signs they could buy. Yeah, so it's just, it's amazing. Did those, did those drawings show any kind of lighting? Uh Depends. A couple of the pylons probably have lights. I can go back. Yeah, the um, these were a translucent plastic yeah. that would have uh, fluorescent tubes inside oh. of them. I believe is what the specs called for. So, so they That's could light a, them up at night. They call those pan face because the you set it down, it looks like a pan um, from the top to the bottom of it. It's yeah, it gave it a lot more strength. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's an international harvester dozer. Let's see if I can. Oh, that's a DT18. They designated their dovers, dozers as TDs. And and look at the big arms on the side here for raising and lowering. Mm -hmm compared to the caterpillar in the background. Here's another DT, DT20. Got completely different arms for the bucket here. There's a droid construction. So, and your international dealer might even be selling these as well as the tractors and refrigerators and such. Here's that photo again. Here we've got a load of, yeah, let's see. I gotta find where I'm at at the moment. Oh, this is the track, track, tor, torsion, international harvest track, track, torsion on flat cars. Um, but notice they've they got winches and side booms and all kinds of of different things, but I'm always intrigued by the blocking in these type of photos. So I can't duplicate the model of the of the crawler, but I can duplicate the blocking. Looks like something from the John Wayne movie. What was it? Uh, Hell Fighters. Oh yes. Yeah. You're right. right. And in blowing this up, I just noticed the um water tank back here that's got does that say farm all on it or yep yeah so let's see what else we got okay here's international truck service 173 company owned branches and service stations around the country there you go one of their brochures bottom of the first column was my uncle's one he ran the one in Devonport Iowa aha Right, right on the river, west yeah. of town. Yeah. So, and of course, this is the front page of that brochure, yeah. advertising one of their trucks. And here's a, another one of their trucks, a little bit, of, um, not something we see very common. This is um, Ohio, Ohio Match Company in Spokane, Washington in 1941. But it's um, what we would maybe call a cab over or something. Narrow gauge railroad. Yeah, yeah. Serving serving a uh, uh, the uh, Ohio Match Company. They're buying lumber to make matchsticks. So. Now here we got the international truck hauling Skeltane, which was a 
propane um, propane to skill gas, a companion fuel to skill gas, which was a, a bottle of gas, as my grandparents called it. So, the natural gas service beyond the city mains. And this photo, what do we got here? Oh, that's international. That's not international harvester. That's IB. That's in Chicago. Here's an international harvester um, hauling a refrigerator uh, body for meat. Here's another load of farmalls. Here's another international tractor attached to the livestock trailer. Can't imagine why I got all these livestock trailers. Um, here is a McCormick Deering kerosene fired grain elevator. A hopper here, the farmer's unloading his grain. Got the kerosene motor here operating the chain drive up to the chute, filling the boxcar. Now, who has modeled one of these? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not, yeah. <laughs> And 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 look who they're what who's the company? It's the Quaker Oats Quaker Company. Oats. They're loading oats. So here we are at the um oh one of the, which factory uh crawler tractors in nineteen forty seven. So This is a um, Madrid, Iowa, IH company demonstration. So this, I don't know if this is the dealership building, but they're demonstrating, um, looks like maybe a gr green, it's got a vacuum system. Maybe they're, oh, they're shelling corn is what it looks like. That's what they got set up. Tractor with the belt driving the, the sheller and, so they're trying to sell these farmers on their corn sheller. <laughs> There's a some more tied down on a flat car. This is in Kansas City. Fairly good sized building there. McCormick Deering um, threshing machines, 1925 is the date of this photo. Here we got some McCormick Moogle tractors from 1914. This photo is in Chicago. I'm not, when I see the word Moogle, I don't think of, of tractors, I think of steam locomotives. But these are very unusual looking. I can tell I got you guys stunned in the silence. <laughs> and, and look at this, they're loaded in B&O gondolas. <laughs> well, that previous picture had a box car that had, excuse me, had M&O on it. Yes. I, What's the M&O? Um, mobile in Ohio? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the Golf Mobile in Ohio. Or, yeah, that before a that's a precursor to the GMO. I think so. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's one of the precursors. Yeah, because this, yeah, this. Let's see, I got a. Yeah, there it is, right there, the M and O. Yeah. Yeah, and this was the photo from what 1914, no, 1920, 1925. So. Yeah. Yeah, you start looking at these photos, it's interesting what you find, what you spot. Now here we've got okay. Washington. This is this is an international harvester primrose cream separator from uh, nineteen in the nineteen twenties. So again, you know, you they were catering to the farmers and farm wives and a variety of, of works and, and me needs so the cream separators they were selling got a little square oil can on the floor behind huh? down there in the bottom right yeah one of the little down there down there 
Yeah. Yep. Sure looks like it. Moved up apparently. Yep. Yeah. Well, that was to give you a little sheen to the cream. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank God the cream <laughs> rises to the top. Maybe her That's... shoes squeak. <laughs> this, this one I've got marked as re McCormick Relief Tractors in 1925. So I'm wondering if these are, are something that's they're shipping overseas and some you know relief project or or somewhere in the United States for some they got the flat steel rims on them so can't tell you any more than that here is a McCormick SP125 combine about 1950 notice it's all open cab we got a, a a reel here for wheat, oats, and uh, you know grass type grains. So, a self propelled unit. The uh, self propelled combines did not come into major use until the fifties. Uh, there was one company in Kansas that made. They started making them in twenty five, but. Some of the early self-propelled were actually using modified Ford Ferguson tractors and such. So here is, we don't <laughs> equate this with um, either Oscar Mayer or International Harvester, an ice, an ice truck, but it's an IH truck with Oscar Mayer ice. So the air conditioned refrigerator. I mean, I ate cold hot dogs when I was a kid, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like okay. saying that's one of the worst pictures you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Worst. Okay. Any idea what we're looking at here? Uh, they're it's international. Sideways. Looks like it's sideways. They're international harvester balers where the mechanism has been swung up on top. Okay. But you fold yeah. this down and you got a bailing machine. Yeah. And a whole you know, a whole string of them there. What's in the crates? Can you zoom in on that? This may be part of the part of the bailing apparatus. Yeah. I can't lots of pulleys. Yep. And they are chained down. That's of course this is equipped this. Flat car is equipped with boxes to put the chains back in. Yeah. Chains and binders. Yeah, this stuff is all chained down. So, oh, this is, is this a, no, this is a QTTA. This is a trailer train car. Okay. So they started wising up. The chains and the binders were worth money. So. All right. Here's a, here's another shot of them. You can see he's starting to, Tie them down. But yeah, this is all flipped up so it's standing upright for transportation. But that would fold down, pick up the the hay and run it through and pop it out as square bales. And look at the rake crated up sitting over here on the platform. I'll zoom in on that for. There have been times when I mowed the yard this year. I wish I had one of these. <laughs> so, oh, this this is a little bit of of an unusual picture. We're loading a, a Frisco boxcar with lumber for the Deering Works Company. Hmm. Um, so you know when they were building those binders, they used a lot of lumber. So they were probably buying a certain grade of hardwood at the Deering Works. It looks like they nailed rubber or leather over the door. Um, yeah. Maybe as a as a uh, to prevent water from. Oh, up here at the top, yeah, that yeah. that would. Or yes. canvas. It'd be a canvas or a cover to keep water from coming in through the top of the door. And also, they would often, once they closed the door, they would use lath and paper to 
to seal the side of the door to keep cinders from flying in and starting fires. And, you know, I've got pictures of boxcars with the paper seals where they've been nailed up with pieces of lath to seal the door. And the purpose was mostly to keep cinders from getting inside the car and starting a fire. This photo is from 1912. So this is the international dealership in Tama, Iowa. Uh, again, this 40s design building with the red pylon and then the, the repair sure. shops and all that in the background. And we've got combines, we've got international trucks, we've got tractors, some implements all around here. So this is an app. I don't know how this M and St. L photo got in here, but this is an international tractor or truck with um, four-wheel drive set up for drilling um, post holes for the for the M and St. L Telegraph Company. Uh, here's that beat loader again. Uh, here we are unloading um, some uh, farm oils at the Alton Depot in 1944. And here is another model of an HO load. And these, are, I can tell these are the lifelike tractors. Um, but someone's got some blocking and stuff down. They didn't get the rims painted or the seats, but we'll let that fly. Another shot of that. And here is a load of farm oils. But what's interesting about this particular load is this is a WCF and N flat car, which is the Waterloo, Cedar Falls, and Northern Inner Urban. Hmm. We don't often see freight cars for interurban companies, but this is the Waterloo, Cedar Falls and Northern, which was the main, was the company that switched the Wrath meatpacking plant, as well as some of the Waterloo um, tractor works are for John Deere. But here they, their flat car loaded up with some farm oil tractors. So, and then, uh, well, let's see, get this working here. This is the IH dealership building in Zeering, Iowa. Uh, I remember driving past this when I lived in Colo. And after I came across that schoolhouse building, I asked the church secretary who lived in Zeering if she would go out and take some pictures. So she did and sent these to me, not knowing what I really wanted or why. <laughs> <laughs> but she was she was very good to work with. And so, and it's, it's, I forget now what it was being used for. The dealership was long gone, but yeah, she did to get a, a smaller town. You know, Zeering's only a few hundred people. But it's typical of what be a small town in, implement dealer in the fifties of what it looked like. Hey, there's one of them Olivers. Let's see what a oh that's it. That's all I've got, Greg. Let me hmm. close out here and stop sharing. Very good. Thank you, Doug. Oh, Thank sure. you, Tim. Thanks. It was International Harvester Night. It's yeah. spontaneous. It looks like, looks like but... Tim and I are going to swap photo files. Yeah, yeah. They have to, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be seeing a red in my sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, do you guys know why John Deere's are green? When they break down, you just leave it in the field. <laughs> oh. My All dad right. was with my dad was with IH for forty two years. Wow. <laughs> so so why are IH red? Yep. But so why I, I, you don't drive a Ford? <laughs> yeah, as as to why different implement companies had different colors, I don't know. But yeah, they this. But boy, you get two farmers together, one wearing a red cap and one wearing a green cap, and you get an argument started pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking since John Deere's are green, you know, so you can leave in the field. 
IH, you know, when they break down, they can find them. <laughs> okay, I'm leaving now. I'm leaving now. Okay. Doug, you remind me of the story of the Nebraska farmer and the Texas rancher who ended up poolside in Hawaii having drinks and found out they're in the same field. So the Texas guy goes to the farmer, says, how big is your farm? He says, I got the best 800 acres of black land ever. I can grow anything. How big is your ranch? Well, in usual Texas fashion, he says, well, I get up at sunset, get in a truck, and I drive and drive and drive. By sunset, I still haven't reached the end of the ranch. <laughs> Nebraska farmer looks at him and says, Yep, I once had a truck like that. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I'm going to say good night. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Next week is Mont Switzer and his favorite freight cars. So part one, we'll look forward to that. And uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great Thursday. Okay. Everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Everybody. Yep. Glad right. I could jump in and, and just do an impromptu here for yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, Doug. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, All right. I enjoyed seeing what yeah, the other stuff. That's great. Yeah. yeah.